In this video, we're going to gain an understanding of joints. Now we use joints in order to mimic a skeleton's functionality. And we call a series of joints that are connected a skeleton. Let's draw out a joint and take a look at the pieces and parts that make it up. I'm going to switch to the animation menu set and I'll choose skeleton and open the joint tool. We currently have that tool active. Now I'm going to click in my perspective here and just draw a couple of joints out. And to finish the tool, I'll just hit enter. So what I've created here is a joint chain or a joint skeleton. The chain is made up of a couple of parts. So first, at the very root of my skeleton or of my joint chain, I have an actual joint. So this is joint number one. Between each joint, and here we have joint number two, in between each of these is a bone. Now we can't actually do anything with the bone, and all we get there is really just a graphical display to show us that there is a connection being made between these two joints. Now when we draw a joint skeleton, we will always end with another joint. So there is not a bone coming off of there. If I select that very last joint and were to get rid of it, we'll hit delete on the keyboard, that's going to take out the bone that was drawn prior. So it's normal and natural to have a joint at the end there. I'm going to open the outliner just so that we can see the structure that we've created. So here's joint one, and we'll expand that, goes to joint two, joint three, and then joint four all in a hierarchy. Now we can break this hierarchy by doing a simple unparent. So if I select joint number two and do shift P, the parent-child relationship is broken, therefore the bone will also disappear. If I reparent this back up, I'll hold shift and then we'll hit P, that bone is then redrawn. We don't have to do anything special there, just a normal parenting operation will complete the joint skeleton. The actual joint part does all the work. So if I choose to rotate the joint, we'll just hit E to bring up the rotate manipulator, and we'll rotate that around. You'll see that everything below that in our hierarchy follows with it. And if I go to the root, and choose to scale, I'm selecting just the root, even though everything highlights typical parent-child relationship, and scale, only the parent is scaling. If I want to scale all of these uniformly, I would select each of the joints. So let's expand that out in the outliner, and I'll choose them. I'll hold control, click on the very last one, and then just work my way up the chain. And now when I scale, all of my joints scale uniformly. Now when we create joints, really don't want to draw them in the perspective view. It's best if when drawing our joints, we draw them in an orthographic view. This will ensure that the joint is planar and that it will rotate properly. Now when adding joints to a character, the joint skeleton does not have to be planar, but it just makes it a lot easier to figure out which way the joint should rotate. So I'll create another quick skeleton here. Let's say we were just going to draw a leg. We would draw this down like that and have that be the foot. And then whenever I'm done drawing my skeleton, I'll just hit enter. Now we're ensuring, we'll switch to rotate, that this joint will rotate properly. So if this were the knee of my character, we could see that it'll fold up the way that it's supposed to. And I can look back in the perspective view and see that it is standing the way that it should be. If I start to draw joints in the perspective view, just like with any of the other views, it's going to place them on the grid plane. So it can be very deceptive, and typically we're just not ever going to be able to draw the joint properly in the perspective view to have it fit or be placed where it needs to be. Now all of our joints, before we can use them, should be clean. And what this means on a joint level is that we should not have any rotation values 
or any scale value. The scale should go back to its default of 1, and the rotation should be set to 0. Now we can freeze the transforms on our joints. So if I were to rotate that, I get a rotation value. I could freeze those transforms. The joint would stay in its position, and the rotation value would go back to 0. Another way, however, is we could just use our Move tool and relocate it to its new position. Okay, this way, when I select the joint, we can see that no rotation was added, just translation. Now the translation will never go away. That's okay. We can keep those translation values. In fact, we need those translation values in order for the skeleton to operate properly. Skeletons are always drawn using a local axis. That local axis is going to go back to its parent. So if I select our knee and I were to take the translate x and set it to zero, you'll see that it goes all the way back to its root. And I'll just type in five just to get it back down. So it's using local coordinates in order to figure out the distance from its parent. So if I select the parent, you can then see the axis there is in the x. So when I translate its child in the x, it moves back to its parent. So we always want those translation values, otherwise all of the joints will just be sitting on top of its root. Now we can also affect the way that joints are displayed. If they're too small in our frame, we don't want to scale them. Instead, we could use a radius value that is connected to each of our joints. If I choose this, and we'll scroll left to right, we can increase the size of the joint display. This does not affect its functionality. It only affects its look. We'll undo, and I'll select all of those joints. And at the very top one, we'll middle mouse and drag, and you can see we can affect the radius of all of our joints simultaneously by doing a group selection.